What's up my friends, welcome back. You're watching Harv Video Order Stuff. And today I'm looking at an interesting product, the ND Throttle Adapter from Photodeox. Yes, it's an interesting product, but is it good and should you buy it? Roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, I've linked everything mentioned in this video, plus any relevant videos in the description box below. And of course, this is not sponsored content, so if you do enjoy this, please let me know by leaving me a like and definitely get yourself subscribed. So, what is it? Well, it's an E to EF mount smart lens adapter with built-in variable ND. How cool is that? When I say smart, of course, I mean it allows your lens and camera to communicate and, in theory, attempt autofocus. However, in this video, I'm not going to touch autofocus for two very good reasons. Firstly, I'm using a Sony a7S II, which doesn't have amazing autofocus to begin with. I mean, it's contrast-based, so not great. Secondly, Photodeox actually say on their website that the AF performance may not be great with any third-party lenses. They also say that continuous autofocus in video is not supported at all, and as this is a videography channel, I thought it just best not to touch it at all. It's a no-go, manual focus only. I'll just add that if you are into photography and you want good autofocus from this adapter, I would say your best bet is something like a Sony A9 or A7R4, paired with Canon L lenses made after 2006. You get between one and eight stops of ND with this adapter, which is pretty impressive, but I swear when I first attached it, I was losing more than a stop of light. So I tested it, plus I tested for color shifting and that dreaded X pattern when you're using really high levels of ND. Here's what I found, I think you'll find it interesting. This was shot with my KNF Concept adapter, obviously that has no ND. It's been well exposed and I've graded it. You'll notice that here my aperture is f8, so in theory if I attach the Photodeox ND adapter, that's going to reduce the amount of light coming in by one stop, so I'll have to compensate by changing my aperture from f8 to f5.6, one stop brighter. Unfortunately when I did that, the image looks like this. I know you guys are eagle-eyed for this kind of thing and I'm sure you can see the exposure dropped massively, when in theory the exposure should have stayed exactly the same. It's even more obvious when we look at them side by side and especially when I bring up the waveform. Clearly the minimum is not one stop, so if it's not, what is it? I'm going to open up my aperture even further to f4 to see what difference that makes. And here it is, you can see the example on the right and it is definitely much closer, but just from eyeballing it I would say this is still underexposed compared to the original version on the left. Looking at the waveform you can see I was pretty spot on, they are fairly closely matched in terms of exposure, but the example on the right is still exposed slightly lower. So our conclusion here has to be that the Photodeox's minimum ND amount is actually a little over two stops. You may also notice that the colours are slightly warmer on the example with the Photodeox, but the colours still look really good. They actually look slightly more saturated, but I suspect that's because it's slightly lower exposed. With just a few tweaks of the exposure, tint and colour temperature, I came up with this, which is very, very similar. So yes, the Photodeox does have an influence on your colour in your footage, but not a big one. Next, I wanted to max out the ND to see if I got that dreaded X pattern across the frame. This was shot at f1.4 with my ISO up at 2500 and as you can see, we are X free. Something strange that I noticed when I was testing out the flaring of my Sigma 20mm was what happened to bokeh balls using the Photodeox. I first noticed it here, where you can see that the sun has an odd halo. At first I thought it was because the lens was wide open. Then when I tested it filming some fairy lights, I noticed the same thing again. My first thought was, oh god, I've got a bad copy of the Sigma 20mm. So to rule that out, of course, I switched adapters and put on my clear adapter to see what happened. The composition of this shot was actually slightly different because I filmed it the following day, but you can clearly see we've got no halos in this shot. Looking at them side by side, it makes it even more obvious. Obviously, the top version is with the Photodeox, the bottom version is with the clear adapter. I would assume the explanation for this is just having extra elements in front of your sensor. Lights coming in, hitting those extra elements, and it's creating the weird halo bits around the brighter areas. Please let me know if you've experienced this same thing. 
Photodeox actually say that you can't adapt any EFS lenses, so lenses made by Canon for crop sensor cameras. They do provide a full list of lenses that are, that are compatible, which obviously you can check out on their website. So why did I buy it? Well, first and foremost, convenience. Recently I picked up a Sigma 20mm f1.4, which I reviewed, I will link below. It's a fabulous lens, but it has a very large bulbous front element. So adding ND filters and whatnot on the front of the lens is a no-go unless I want to get some sort of matte box. And that's just a whole layer of hassle I didn't want to have. I definitely prefer minimal setups that are fast and convenient to use. So this seemed to tick a lot of boxes for me. So how's the build quality? My first impression was a really good one. It's solidly built from almost entirely metal. I know that lenses click really solidly into place, but some people have said that they find it too tight. Personally, I haven't had that experience at all, and I've tried it on probably eight different lenses. The ND ring is beautifully smooth, and unlike many other ND filters, it has hard stops, which I love. However, from time to time, I do get connection problems. It happens usually when I turn the camera on, or if I'm changing lenses. Usually, you'll notice that the camera isn't getting any information from the lens. You'll know it's happened because the lens shuts down to its smallest aperture and won't display anything on screen. Thankfully, I've never had this during filming, and it is quite an easy fix, albeit a temporary one. All you need to do is disconnect the adapter from the camera just partially and then reconnect it and that should fix it. Next I've got some pros and cons for you, starting with the pros. Firstly the concept is brilliant and I know that Canon have an equivalent of this for adapting their EF glass to their RF mount mirrorless cameras so I'm just really glad that there's one for Sony now. Of course my hope is that someday all cameras will come with built-in ND filters either electronic or physical, how great would that be? Secondly, the build quality does seem really good. Despite some mixed reviews that I've seen, I'm hoping this is gonna last quite a while. I'd also love that buttery smooth ND control ring. It's just lovely. Thirdly, one to eight stops of ND is a really good range. And I know that's probably not quite enough for some of the hardcore long exposure photography people out there, but for video, perfect. Lastly, I have also never noticed any kind of X pattern when you've got the ND at its maximum. And actually eight stops is definitely enough for me. I have never used it at its maximum, so it's all good. So what about the cons? Well, clearly the biggest issue is the connection problems. I have it happen to me maybe every other time I shoot something, so it's not the end of the world. And still, thankfully, I've never had it happen during filming. If you have any problems with this and you wanna get it fixed, fear not because Photodeox give you a 24 month warranty. Sorted. Secondly, and well, you saw my tests, with this at its minimum, it says you get one stop. It's just not, I'm sorry. It's more like two stops, but for me, that isn't a big problem. However, you need to be aware that if you're using this adapter during the day, you're out filming and then it gets to the evening, you may want to bring a spare adapter with no glass in at all just because your low light performance will suffer. If you're out there shooting with your favorite f1.4 prime lenses, this adapter makes it the equivalent of an f2.8 in terms of noise levels. So yes, definitely do keep a spare clear adapter. I use this one, which is the KNF Concept adapter, um, so that if you know, when it gets to the time that you need to roll your ND all the way to minimum, switch. And then there's the issue of the haloing, which I really want to stress how this is not a huge deal. I'm gonna play just a few clips I took from my Sigma 20 millimeter review video, which I will link below. And you'll see just how lovely the image quality is and that you won't notice any kind of haloing at all when using this adapter day to day. I use it in every single clip that you'll see here.
Something else you should be aware of is that you will get some flashing when you open up that aperture. This is reasonably common, so don't worry, this does happen with quite a few different adapters. And it is also something that Photodeox warn customers of on their website. So I'm not including this as a con, but I felt like I should let you know anyway. Lastly, I'm not sure if there are any kind of patent issues with this adapter, but why in the hell haven't Metabones made an equivalent? Wouldn't you love to see this adapter that allows continuous autofocus in video? How good would that be? And finally, my opinion, and the Photodeox ND Throttle is actually an excellent product, except that it doesn't allow continuous autofocus in video and for the occasional connection issue. If not for those things, it would be absolutely perfect. When we compare it to the Canon EF to RF mount adapter, that one, you can actually slot in different types of filter. However, when you buy that Canon adapter, which I'll add is hideously expensive for what it is, and then say you want to film with no ND whatsoever, Canon actually make you buy a separate clear glass slot in filter for an extra $140. Hey Canon, how about when people buy that, you throw in a free slot in filter with nothing in it, just a piece of plastic, so that when filmmakers go out and they want no ND, they're not going around with a big hole in their adapter. How about that? I'm just joshing. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Of course, I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has hand-picked this top video for you, and the bottom video is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out shoot better video. See you guys.